Hey everyone, I'm Chrono from the Headphone Show and this is the Aria. It was introduced last year in 2019 and it's an open back planar magnetic headphone that at a retail price of $15.99 serves as one of the many high-end offerings in Hi-Fi Man's reference series. Let's take a look. Despite coming in at roughly half the price, the Aria's design both structurally and technologically seems to be heavily inspired by that of Hi-Fi Man's $3500 HE1000V2. Like its older sibling, the Aria is utilizing Hi-Fi Man's nanometer diaphragm and their asymmetrical magnetic circuit to reduce interference in sound wave transmissions with the aim of producing a cleaner sound as a whole. So with the Aria borrowing elements from the series highly coveted flagship, how does it perform? Does it make good on its promise of providing a stunning audio value? Well, we'll talk about how this thing sounds in just a minute here, but before we get to that, let's go over the basics, starting off with packaging and accessories. When I reviewed the Hi-Fi Man Ananda, one of the things that stood out to me was that it actually came in a very nice box with a pseudo leather-like cover that read Ananda on it. So, I was sort of surprised to find out that the Aria, despite costing nearly twice as much, actually came in a very simple box with a slide off top that was a lot or actually identical to that of the entry level Sundara. Needless to say, the packaging and unboxing experience for the Aria were very simple ones. Equally simple is the Aria suite of accessories, which consists of only one cable. With the Aria, you will receive a 2 meter fabric sleeve cable that terminates in dual sided 3.5 millimeter jacks for the headphone side and a quarter inch connector on the amplifier side, which I think is much better than the old, really long surgical tube like cable that Hi-Fi Man used to include with their headphones. Whilst you definitely get everything you need to get going, I do think it would have been nice if Hi-Fi Man included a 4 pin balanced XLR cable or maybe a longer version of the included cable as users listening not at their desk might find this one to be a little bit too short. Now for build quality and comfort, as I mentioned earlier, the Aria's design is based off that of the HE1000V2, with the same suspension style headman system and the unmistakable Hi-Fi Man elongated ovoid ear cup shape, albeit in an all black finish. For me personally, the Aria does not particularly feel or look like the most premium headphone out there, especially when compared to others in its price range like the Focal Clear, Odyssey LCDX, and Sennheiser HD100S. Nonetheless, I do think that the design and construction that Hi-Fi Man used here is a very practical and rugged one that's been reinforced compared to older models and it shouldn't fall apart or easily deteriorate under the stress of daily extensive use. For comfort, I think that the Aria is one of the most comfortable headphones I've personally tried. Despite their large form factor and full size planar magnetic array, the Aria is remarkably light at only 404 grams, which keeps them from becoming fatiguing or tough to wear in prolonged listening sessions. As you'd expect from the giant ear cuffs, they provide a lot of room for your ears to fit in, as the pads are deep, angled, and they provide plenty of space in their inner diameter. Additionally, because it's using the HE1000 style headband, the Aria distributes weight very nicely and has ear cup swivel, a feature that was somehow absent on the Sundara and the Ananda. If I have any complaints for comfort though, is that the ear cups, because of their size, occasionally feel like they reach a little too far down and put a bit of pressure on my jaw. By no means does this apply a painful amount of pressure, but it can apply enough to make it noticeable and a little bit distracting. One last thing I should know is that the sports clothing like mesh used on the pads might irritate some users, particularly those with facial hair. Alright, so now we're at the part that most of you are probably here for and that is of course the sound. So after listening to and enjoying the Sundara and Ananda, both of which are also part of Hi-Fi Man's reference series, I was really looking forward to checking out the Aria as it was the next step up in that lineup. After all, the Aria is a headphone that, since its introduction, it's been met with resounding praise and after listening to them myself, I think I understand why. 
Upon my first listen to the Arya, I was really taken aback by many facets of its presentation, the first of which was the perceived sense of clarity that it conveyed. I will discuss this quality in further detail when diving into the technical performance section of this review, but in short, I was really impressed by how the Arya was able to realistically distinguish all the lines that compose my music, whilst also reproducing each instrument with the utmost fidelity. Then there was the Arya's tuning, which, although a little on what I think people might call the analytical side, I found it to be pretty good. So I would describe the Arya's tonality as faintly bright, but it does retain a very present bass response alongside linear, slightly counterclockwise tilted mids, and very well extended highs that feature a subtle emphasis in the low to mid treble, an overall curve that I consider to be very balanced and neutral. Taking a look at the bass region first, the Arya's bass has exceptional extension with a linear response that reaches all the way down to 20Hz and surfaces the deep rumble of those really low sub bass frequencies, a common but very enjoyable trait offered by planar magnetic headphones. As is also characteristic of headphones using a planar transducer, the Arya's bass is tight and it has an extremely fast leading edge that makes low tones feel instant and fast. Now, this snappy, transient quality on the Aria might not appease all listeners as it can occasionally make the bass feel a little bit dry or lacking in natural decay when compared to dynamic driver headphones, but for me, I feel as though it makes the bass a lot more controlled and structured. As for the Aria's bass tuning, I would describe it as clean and even, with no one section of the lower register feeling boosted over the others. I think that due to the lack of warmth, particularly between 150 to 200 hertz, some might not find the Aria's bass as enjoyable or as full sounding, but for me and for my tastes and preferences, I think it's great. It has a very good level of sub bass presence under 100 hertz, and it is leveled as it makes a clear transition into the mid range. All in all, I think that the Aria's bass is phenomenal. It, it delivers the depth of a planar magnetic driver along with the same level of nimbleness and articulation that headphones like the Focal Stelia can achieve. As for the mids, I think that the Aria's mid-range as a whole has a good balance to it that is very natural sounding. However, as I mentioned earlier, it does have a bit of a counterclockwise tilt to it that places an emphasis on the presence region in the upper mid-range uh, between 2 to 5k. So this upper mid-range shift on the Aria I think could make uh, the mid-range come across for some listeners as a little bit lean or even a little bit shouty, particularly at around 3k. Nonetheless, I do think that mid-tones are portrayed very accurately on the Aria, and the tuning actually reminds me quite a bit of that of the Sennheiser HD600, which has one of my personal favorite presentations for the mids. I just think that listeners looking for a mid-range with an enhanced sense of tonal richness might be left wanting with the Aria. Lastly, for frequency response, we have the highs, and one of my favorite qualities for both the Ananda and the Sundara was the tuning for the treble ranges. Despite both of them being slightly on the brighter side, they were remarkably natural sounding, balanced, and very smooth. Thankfully, the same can be said for the Aria. The Aria's highs for me come through with just the right amount of sparkle, and they are exceptionally well articulated. Additionally, the Aria has great extension in the upper treble with really nice air qualities above 10k that add a nice glisten to the highs. The only deviations I really heard here in the treble range were two very subtle rises at 5k and 7.5k that were extremely inoffensive and at worst would only add the slightest bit of glare in the lower treble and make cymbals come through with a little bit added zing. Aside from those two very minor and hardly noticeable uh, peaks, uh, the treble on, this, uh, on the Aria I really found to be uh, great. It was free of sibilance, harmonics were very well textured, and percussive instruments had a very realistic top end strike. Alright, so now moving away from tonality and frequency response, we get to talk about technical performance, which is where I think that the Aria really shines. So let's talk about resolution first. Resolution and overall sense of clarity are some of the Aria's best qualities. The Aria's 
detail retrieval capabilities are really impressive and it holds its own against some of the most resolving headphones that I've listened to like the HD100S, uh, the Rad Zero, and also the Focal Stelia. In all registers of the frequency response, the Aria is able to convey a very realistic image of the music with all the nuances and instrument and, and vocal tones being perfectly textured. But then what I actually think makes the Aria's internal resolution really exceptional is that even when it's reproducing highly complex, busy musical passages, all the elements in the mix retain a flawless structure. Now for soundstage imaging and layering, the Aria's staging capabilities are every bit as impressive as its resolution. So the Aria has probably the most open sounding stage that I've heard on any headphone. and it's easily able to create listening atmospheres that with the right tracks are extremely believable and almost lifelike. Needless to say, I personally find the Aria stage to be very spacious with a great sense of width that is only challenged by that of the HD100S. For imaging, I find that the Aria delivers impeccable performance as it is highly capable when it comes to positioning and discerning the location of all the various tracks in the music, games, and movies. Furthermore, there is the Aria's instrument separation and layering, which I believe may be some of the best in its class. Whilst the HC-800S has truly astonishing layering capabilities with all instrument and vocal lines being very well defined and distinguished, the Aria takes things a little bit further by creating a sense of distance between the different tracks and this just adds another layer of depth to the images which enhances spatial awareness. For the last category of technical performance, we have dynamics, which is an area where the Aria, like other headphones with this Hi-Fi Man elongated cup design, seriously falters. All right, so there's really no way around that the Aria's driver has some seriously wimpy dynamics. Unfortunately, the Aria really is unable to deliver that exciting physical impact that other headphones can offer. If you're looking for a pair of headphones that can add an engaging dynamic quality to add some kick to your music, the Aria really is not my first recommendation and I would instead encourage you to check out some of uh, Focal or Odyssey's offerings as those tend to have significantly more energetic presentations. Um, on the other hand though, if what you're looking for is a headphone with a softer, more relaxing presentation, then I do think that the Aria is a great option. And that's probably why I personally really like to use it when I'm working at my desk. Okay, so as always, before heading into the conclusion, I just wanted to briefly touch up on EQ. Now, I think that the Aria is a headphone that sounds fantastic out of the box in terms of tonality as it's very agreeable, very enjoyable. However, I always like to use some EQ when I listen to headphones, uh, just to bring it a little closer to my personal preference. So for the Aria in particular, I like to cool down the upper mid range just a little bit. 3K for me comes across as just a tiny bit forward or shouty. And then uh, cymbals were a little splashy for me. I listened to a lot of rock music, which is often a little bright and not always perfectly mastered and whatnot. So uh, just to keep them from being occasionally forward as well, I do like to cool down the uh, low to mid treble as well. So I made a post on the headphones community forums that has a list of all my EQ presets, including, for, including the one for the Aria. So if you'd like to check that out, there's gonna be a link in the description down below. The Hi-Fi Man Aria has been seriously enjoyable to listen to with its tonally accurate, easygoing tuning, outstanding comfort, and superb technical performance. It has really proven itself to be a sensational headphone. Okay, so now to wrap up this review, whilst it definitely makes some compromises in the dynamics department as well as a little bit on the build, I do think that the Hi-Fi Man Aria way more than makes up for it with the other qualities that it has to offer. And at least for me, it establishes itself as the benchmark to beat for tonality and technical performance in the sub $2,000 range. At its price tag of $15.99, I feel like I can confidently give the Hi-Fi Man Aria a very strong recommendation. It really makes for a great listening experience and I think it really does provide some of the best value in the current high-end audio market. Anyways, that is all for me today. I hope you enjoyed this video or found it useful. If you did, do consider dropping a like. And if you want to learn more about the Aria or many, many other headphones, I highly encourage you to check out the review section available on headphones.com, which already has dozens of articles posted on there. For more headphone and audio content, stay tuned by subscribing to The Headphone Show and hitting the notification bell. 
Until next time, this is Chrono signing off.